After Saigon, we flew north to Da Nang, a coastal city in the center of Vietnam. The Han River splits the city and we stayed on the beach side, which was pretty built up with high rises and mid rises. But Da Nang just doesn't have anywhere near the traffic that we saw in Saigon. Yes, there are motorbikes parked just about everywhere. But even major intersections are much less crowded and much more orderly than the constant chaos of Saigon. This multi-lane street heading to the beach had very light traffic at 4 p.m. on a weekday afternoon. The coastal road, also never very full, was a row of high-rise hotels with more under construction. Da Nang's waterfront promenade was decked out for the new year, the year of the cat in Vietnam. The wide, tree-lined thoroughfare stretches along Mi Khe Beach, one of the most beautiful beaches in Vietnam and the setting for the 1980s Vietnam War drama, China Beach. Lined with restaurants, cafes, shops, public facilities, and even pigeon houses, it's a popular destination along the South China Sea. Like a white beacon overlooking the bay, the statue of the Lady Buddha at Chua Lin Ong, the Lin Ong Pagoda, stands serenely on a bed of roses and lotus flowers, keeping protective watch over the water and the city. Lin Ong is an entire hillside complex with beautifully sculpted temples, and gardens full of manicured and sculpted trees. But the clear focal point is the Lady Buddha. Standing over 200 feet tall, she is the tallest Buddha statue in all of Vietnam. She is the Buddhist representation of the Dao Mao, the shamanic mother goddess who is widely worshipped here, especially in central and northern Vietnam. Just west of us, the Dragon Bridge crosses the Han River. And every weekend night, it puts on a show. About 45 minutes west of Da Nang by car, up in the Ba Na Hills, Sun World is a very popular family weekend destination. Kind of a Vietnamese Disneyland, the entrance plaza is a palatial structure modeled after 19th century imperial architecture. After walking through seemingly endless gardens, we caught a cable car up into the forested hills. The ride, over three and a half miles in length, and rising nearly a mile in elevation is a serene 20-minute journey past dramatic mountain landscapes climbing higher and higher into thick clouds the end finally coming into sight the golden bridge is the park's most famous and most popular structure. An unusual construct, seemingly suspended above the forest by giant artificial stone hands, it's pretty surreal, especially when draped in the foggy mist. The surrealism continued as we walked through a fairy tale world. Le Jardin d'Amour felt like something out of Alice in Wonderland especially when the mists rolled in. And these two stilt walkers added to the mystique. Though some in the crowd made their jobs more hazardous than usual. And fading in and out of the mists, a giant meditating Buddha 
sits amidst artificial waterfalls, serenely watching over worshippers and the forest. About 45 minutes down the coast from Da Nang, the small historic town of Hoi An was a wealthy spice port on the Maritime Silk Road for 1,200 years. Initially part of the Kingdom of Champa, then later the Empire of Vietnam, at its peak in the 16th to 18th centuries, it was the most important trade port on all of the South China Sea. Chinese, Japanese, and European merchants all settled here, and it's for the architecture of this period that it's now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are many beautifully preserved buildings, some converted to restaurants, some, like the old house of Tan Ki, used as museums to this bygone age. The first floor remembers the history of the house and the Tan family but the current generation still lives on the second floor. This house is at river level, no doubt important for a trading family, but highly susceptible to flooding, as they've documented very well. Japanese merchants settled here in the 16th century and built this covered bridge to connect their enclave to the center of town. It's now become a symbol of Hoi An, enshrined on the 20,000 Dong note. This 17th century building, with a gorgeous entry garden, was constructed by Chinese merchants from Fujian province as an assembly hall and temple. Most heritage buildings in Hoi An require an entry fee, but you can purchase a pack of five tickets from the tourist center for under 10 US dollars per person. The rear altar is dedicated to Tian Hao, a Chinese sea goddess who blesses fishers and sailors with safe travel. The Quan Kong Temple is another 17th century Chinese temple, dedicated to a deified 3rd century Chinese general the back grotto is devoted to the Vietnamese Dao Mao mother goddess, whose statues are seen throughout Hoi An. This blend of cultures can be seen notably in the Tran family hall. Built in the 19th century by a prominent Vietnamese official of the first Nguyen Emperor's administration, it follows Chinese Feng Shui and Vietnamese Yin Yang elemental principles, also using Japanese support structures. The chapel honors 300 years of Tran family ancestors. And catalogs Vietnamese history through its collection of ceramics and incredible collection of coins. The oldest dating back to the year 25. Hoi An's mercantile tradition continues today in the massive number of shops that cater to hordes of tourists. More than a million descend on a small town every year. Historically, Hoi An was known for spices and porcelain. Today, it's textiles and tailors. Men's and women's, casual, more formal, and in between. Custom and off the rack are all available. Vic had a shirt made in 48 hours for under 40 US dollars. History, food, and clothing aren't Hoi An's only tourist draws. Many buildings and boats are strung with colorful lanterns. Lanterns are popular throughout Asia for New Year and other festivals, but parts of Hoi An are decked out year-round. And as beautiful as Hoi An is during the day, it's even more so when it's lit up at night. Our exploration of Vietnam continues, so hit like, subscribe, and the bell icons to make sure you catch all of our upcoming episodes.